What will happen to Earth when the Milky Way and Andromeda galaxies merge? Within 4.5 billion years, the Milky Way and the Andromeda galaxy will merge into a single galaxy. During the process, billions of stars will migrate from one galaxy to another, and some may shoot out into intergalactic space, becoming wandering stars. But what will happen to our solar system? Will it survive the cosmic dance between Milky Way and Andromeda? Could a star collide with the Sun? Keep watching to find out. Galactic Habitable Zone If you are a faithful follower of Insane Curiosity, surely more than once you have heard about the famous Habitable Zone, a region around a star where the temperatures are ideal for a planet to have water in a liquid state. That is an area that is neither very hot nor very cold. But did you know that galaxies also have a habitable zone? Yeah, this is the galactic habitable zone, defined as that region of a galaxy in which the necessary conditions exist for life to arise and to prosper for billions of years. Currently, it is considered that the defining parameters of a galactic habitable zone are two. One, abundance of heavy elements and two, cataclysmic astrophysical events. The first refers to the chemical elements necessary for forming organic chemistry, mainly carbon, oxygen, and nitrogen. This parameter is known in astrophysics with the name of metallicity. The medium and massive stars produce these heavy elements, releasing them into the interstellar medium at the end of their existence, either as planetary nebulae or as supernovae. The regions that have had more generations of stars of these types are those with the highest metallicity and, therefore, where the emergence of the chemistry necessary for the appearance of life is more likely. Thanks to these stars, the availability of chemical elements for life reaches its maximum near the galactic nuclei and decreases as we approach the edges. The second factor is the frequency with which highly energetic phenomena occur with the capacity to emit large amounts of radiation or particles since these emissions could destroy organic molecules and life. Cataclysmic astrophysical processes are supernova explosions, gamma-ray bursts, high star formation rates followed by mass supernova explosions, and jets forming in the accretion black hole disks. These events are also more frequent in the galactic nuclei and less frequent at the edge, making the chances of sustaining life greater outward than towards the galactic center. The conjunction of these two factors in spiral galaxies results in that, on the one hand, the edges are more difficult for life to emerge, even though they are safe areas due to the lack of heavy elements. And on the other, the nuclei are not conducive either, since although they have a high concentration of heavy elements, they are the areas with the highest radiation levels and the most frequent cataclysmic events. So in spiral galaxies, there is an intermediate ring between the nucleus and the edges, where the possibility of the emergence of life and the possibility that it thrives for billions of years is increased to let evolution do its job. A region where the rate of cataclysmic events is not as low as the edges, but much lower than at the core, and where the amount of heavy elements is not as high as at the core, but is more significant than at the edges. This ring is the galactic habitable zone, that is to say, the galactic habitability zone. In this context, it is not uncommon for the location of the Sun in the Milky Way to be precisely in this region. Even though the galactic habitable zone is considered conducive to life, no concrete evidence of life has yet been found anywhere else in the Milky Way. However, several stars within the galactic habitable zone have been identified with planets within their star's habitable zone raising the possibility that life exists elsewhere in the galaxy. Since we only know of one example of life, there is not much certainty about the minimum degree of metallicity necessary for the complex chemistry that leads to life to arise. Furthermore, for each galaxy, more detailed studies are required to take into account the differences in metallicity between the spiral arms and the spaces between them. But for now, at least in our galaxy, there is this galactic habitable zone, and we are lucky to be there. Where will the new habitable zone be? What will happen when the Milky Way and Andromeda merge? What will happen is that this habitable zone will change places, and so will the Sun. 
The merger of both galaxies will give rise to a new galaxy called Miltromeda, which will be larger and whose habitable zone will travel more towards the edges because the center will have a higher concentration of stars. Both galaxies will exchange stars during the merger process, so the Sun will inevitably leave the galactic habitable zone and migrate to other regions where conditions will differ. If the Sun moves outside the galactic habitable zone, this would have significant consequences for life on Earth. For example, if the Sun were too close to the galactic nucleus, the intense radiation and stellar activity in that region would make it very difficult for life to develop and survive. In addition, the presence of large amounts of dust and gas in that region would also make it difficult for planets to form and sustain. In addition, in the new galaxy resulting from the merger of the Milky Way and Andromeda, there will be a greater concentration of stars near the nucleus, which would cause the forces of gravitational attraction of nearby stars to affect the Sun. If that were not enough, the supermassive black holes of both galaxies will merge and create one even larger, whose gravitational pull will affect all stars several thousand light years away. So if the Sun gets too close to the galactic nucleus, it is unlikely that life will thrive on any of the eight planets in the solar system. On the other hand, if the Sun were too far from the galactic center, things would not be so bad on Earth. In this scenario, the number of heavy elements necessary for life would be much lower, making it difficult to form and maintain planets with the right conditions for life. Still, as long as we manage to live in harmony with the Earth's resources, we will survive. Also, the stellar density at the galaxy's edge is much lower, which means that the frequency of catastrophic events such as supernovae and asteroid collisions would also be lower. If the Sun were too close to the galactic nucleus, cosmic radiation and powerful streams of interstellar gas and dust would significantly affect the chemistry of Earth's atmosphere and the stability of the climate. Also, the intense stellar activity in that region would mean that the chances of Earth being hit by celestial objects like asteroids and comets would be much higher. There would also be a greater chance that the Earth would be exposed to dangerous gamma ray and X-ray emissions, which would severely affect all living things. On the other hand, if the Sun were at the galaxy's edge, nearby stars would be much less common, meaning Earth would be exposed to less cosmic radiation and less likely to be hit by dangerous celestial objects. However, the lower stellar density would also mean the Sun would be left alone. The closest star to the solar system would no longer be Proxima Centauri, but another star much farther away, perhaps hundreds of light years away. Effects on Earth As you can see, it is impossible to predict precisely where the Sun will move when both galaxies merge into one. It is tough to calculate the gravitational effects that billions of stars will exert on the Sun for thousands of millions of years. We must also remember that by then the Sun will have already begun to die, and all the planets in the solar system will have ceased to be habitable. But if humanity somehow manages to survive all of this, we'll be fine if the Sun doesn't migrate a distance that puts it closer to the galactic core. Since if the fusion between the Milky Way and Andromeda takes us to the galaxy's edges instead of the center, it will be the best news. Although there are not enough materials in this region for other planets to form, at least life on Earth will be safe and we can worry about getting materials later. But if, on the contrary, the Sun moves towards the center of the galaxy, there is no need to be alarmed either. Remember that this event will occur within 4.5 billion years and will take more than 5 billion years to finish. So we will have enough time to leave our solar system and find another safer place to shelter. But let's use the power of imagination and imagine what the merger of both galaxies would look like from Earth. Currently, the Andromeda galaxy is tough to see in the sky since it looks like a nebula instead of a galaxy. Still in many years, that will change and it will look bigger and bigger until one day, in billions of years, it is visible even during the day. If the solar system migrates much closer to the galactic nucleus, the night sky will look very different than it does today. First, the number of stars visible would increase dramatically. Currently, we can see about 2,500 stars with the naked eye from Earth, but if we were closer to the galaxy's center, we would see tens of thousands of stars. Also, the Milky Way shape would appear much brighter and more defined in the night sky. 
the whitish strip that we currently see in the sky would be much brighter and broader. Also, we would be able to distinguish the shape of the galaxy's spiral arms more clearly. Also, we could see many more nebulae and star clusters. It would be an impressive spectacle. Every night, we could see gigantic and colorful astronomical objects, something that nowadays we can only see in the movies. However, being close to the galactic core would also have its drawbacks. First, the cosmic radiation that would reach Earth would be much higher. This could harm living things on Earth, as cosmic radiation can damage DNA and increase cancer risk. Furthermore, the presence of a supermassive black hole at the center of the galaxy would be much more evident and potentially dangerous. As the Milky Way and the Andromeda Galaxy come closer and eventually collide, the black hole at the galaxy's center may become active and emit jets of high-energy matter and radiation. These jets could threaten Earth and its biosphere if the solar system were close enough, destroying the atmosphere and also all living beings. Conversely, the night sky would appear much darker if the solar system migrates to an area much further from the galactic core. The Milky Way would be much less prominent since much of its brightness comes from the concentration of stars and dust at the galactic center. Furthermore, the distribution of stars in the sky would also change. Instead of having many bright, close stars, you would see few individual distant stars in all directions. Also, many of these stars would be difficult to see with the naked eye due to their great distance and low luminosity. In general, the night sky would be less spectacular than what we are used to seeing today. But the good side is that in this scenario, any life form that is still on Earth will survive without significant setbacks. Will there be star clashes? In the nuclei of both galaxies, there will surely be several collisions between the largest and most massive stars, especially near the black holes. But in the center and edges, these events will not occur or will be extremely rare since the distances separating the stars are enormous. And even if the galaxies merge, most of the stars will not touch. And what if the sun shoots out of the galaxy and becomes a wandering star? Could life on Earth thrive if this were to happen? What would the sky look like if the sun left the galaxy? If you want to know the answer to those questions, wait for our next video. And what do you think? Would life on Earth survive if the sun left the solar system? Let us know your opinion with your valuable comment.